This conference will now be recorded. So in today's session, we are going to discuss about lightning data services. So what exactly the lightning data services and what is a use? And what we can do with the help of this lighting data services. Now, let's see practical. Now, generally, data in the sense what? Data means records. So, what are the data that we have stored? That means it may be accounts data, leads data, contacts data, cases data, whatever, anything. Data means records. So once a table is ready with the required fields, then what we can do inside the table, we can able to insert some records also. We can view the records, we can modify the records, we can delete the records, we can do. That means we can insert some new records also. We can update the records, that means we can edit the records. We can delete the records, we can view the records. That means we can get the records information from the database. Then how can we do that generally? For that one, we require some Apex. That means Apex programming. So as part of your Apex programming, we have discussed about the concept of DML statements. DML statements. With the help of these DML statements, we can insert the records, we can update, we can delete, we can perform all the operations also. But as part of Salesforce, without using any Apex class, without using any Apex programming, we can perform all these DML operations on your object cards with the help of a feature called as Lightning Data Service. So, Lightning data service will allow you to interact with your Salesforce objects. It allows you to interact with your Salesforce object without using any Apex class, without using any Apex programming, without using any controller classes, just with the help of this JavaScript itself, we can interact with your Salesforce objects and we can perform all the operations. That means, by using JavaScript, we can interact with your Salesforce objects and we can perform any DML operation also. We can insert the records, we can update the records, we can delete, we can view, we can perform all these operations also just by using JavaScript without using any Apex code. We no need to use any Apex class. We no need to use any DML statements as part of Apex programming. Everything we can operate just with the help of JavaScript itself. Through JavaScript, if you want to interact with your Salesforce objects, and then at that time, if you're not having any Apex classes, then we don't need to have any server trips. Just at the client side, through asynchronously, 
asynchronously we can perform these operations so that we can able to improve the application performance also so in this case lightning data services will allow you to interact with any salesforce object it may be standard object it may be custom object also with any salesforce objects you can interact without using any apex controller class without using any apex programming we can directly we can perform interact Using and we can perform all the demo operations. It may be insert, it may be update, it may be delete, it may be view. We can perform all the demo operations on your Salesforce objects. This will be the help of JavaScript itself. So, in this case, what are the various benefits are available as part of this Lightning Data Services? We'll see practically one by one. Now, let me explain. Lightning Data Services allows us to interact with the Salesforce objects. Salesforce objects from Lightning Web Component. From Lightning Web Component without using any Apex controllers. That is, by using JavaScript, we can interact with any Salesforce object, any Salesforce object, and we can perform all the DML operations on the object cards. Now, so that we can improve the application performance also. So now here in this case, what are the various benefits are available as part of this Lightning Data Services here? Now, let me explain the benefits. Hence, we can avoid the server trips and we can improve the application performance. And we can improve the application performance. Now, let's see the benefits. What are the benefits? So whenever if you are going to be using the selecting data services, we no need to use any Apex classes. Generally, in order to interact with the Salesforce objects, we are writing some Apex classes. Through the Apex classes, we are using DML statements, with the help of those DML statements, we can perform the DML operations on your object class. But here, we no need to use any Apex classes. That is the first thing. Second one, whenever if you want to fetch the data from the object, we are using SOQ evil codes. But here, we no need to use any SOQ evil codes. So without writing any SOQ evil codes also, we can fetch the records from that object. That is one of the major benefits. So now we can perform all the operations, like as all the DML operations, like as insert, update, delete, and we can even to view the records also. We can perform all these operations. Now, whenever we are going to be interacting with the objects, whenever we are performing some operations on the records, you can raise a question. Sir, suppose for example, so now somebody, okay, somebody has shared a record to me. Through manual sharing or through automated sharing, they have shared a record to me. Now I'm having only read only access. When I try to modify the record, will Salesforce will cross check do we have the modification permission of the record or not? Yes. So whenever we are going to be performing the operation on that records, so LDS will take care of the field level security. Will take care of field level security here. That means what it is indicating that whether you are having the permission to modify this particular okay, field values or not, it will check that field level security will be taken care by the LDS itself. Whenever you are updating the values, okay, whenever we are going to be updating the records at one place, then automatically this will be reflecting in all the other places also over there. That means what? Whenever if you're changing the value of one field, okay, one place, then automatically it will be reflecting in all the other places also automatically by default. That facility is available. 
And then in this case, what we can do, we no need to have any server trips. Okay, we no need to have any server trips here. That means we don't need to have any server calls so that we can reduce the number of server trips and then we can able to improve the application performance also over here. Now, so now we are in this case. Let's see what are the benefits. Let me give that one by one. Now, we no need to prepare or no need to write the Apex classes. Apex classes. Second one, we no need to write any SO cable queries to fetch the cards. Third one, we can perform all the crude operations on the cards. That means what? Insert, update, delete, view or get operations. Now C means what? Read. R means read. That means fetching the data. That means get. U means update. That means update. D means delete. These are the operations. Root means C means insert. That means, okay. Creating, creating the record. C means create. Create means inserting. Now, R means reading. That means fetching the data. U means update. That means edit. And D means delete. So these are the operations we can do with the help of this LDS. Next one. While performing the operations, On the records, LDS will take care of field level security. Field level security by We no need to take care of this field level security that will be taken care by lighting designs, lighting data services automatically by Now. Upon updating the value at one place, it will reflect the mean value in all other places, other reference, other places automatically by default. Automatically by default on the page. Suppose in one component, if I'm changing this value, if the same component or if the same feature is using another component, there also it will be getting reflected automatically. Now, it avoids the server calls and we can improve the application performance. Can improve the application performance. Next. It stores the result records inside the case memory. Inside the case memory, so we can reduce the number of server types. Now, these are few benefits are also available. Now, by using this lightning data services, okay, we can able to interact with your Salesforce objects through okay, without using that Apex classes.
same this case whenever we are using this linking data services so now we are not using any apex classes we are not writing any code just by using the javascript itself we can interact with your salesforce objects and we can perform all these operations now how can we do that whenever we are using this cds which is the linking data services in order to perform the daemon operation sign your objects directly we have two ways are available so upon using the cds okay inside your lighting web components to perform the daemon operations on your object through javascript we have to this first one form based with the help of by taking the user interface also we can do that second one programming based first one form based second one programming based both So now, if it is a farm-based over here, which will reference this lighting design system by using some additional components. So, as part of your lighting your components, you also have given some additional components. Like till now, we have used so many components, such as button component, and then text box input component over here, and then we have card component. Like there are so many components we have used. So we have some relevant components that are under the specific for interact with the Salesforce objects. So in this case, we can use some of the common components to build the source code. So we can use some of the common components to build the source code. So we can use some of the common components to build the source code. So we can use some of the common components to build the source code. So we can use some of the common components to build the source code. So we can use some of the common components to build the source code. So we can use some of the common components to build the source code. So we can use some of the common components to build the source code. So we can use So now we are going to use this user interface. API. That means for lighting data services purely built upon okay user interface API. In this user interface API, we are having some set of ready made methods that are available to perform this operation through programmatically with the help of Java. There also we are not using any Apex classes. In this complete LDS, we are not using any Apex code. Without using that Apex code, we can able to perform this table operation. Now, Now let's see. In this case, let's see. While referencing the lighting data services, lighting data services inside the lighting web component. We have the below types. First one, farm based. Second one, programming based. Now, farm based, programming based. Now, in this case, let me explain what is farm based. Here, we can able to use some ready-made components given by user. Okay, we can use that ready-made components given by lighting. Data services. We can reference the lighting data services by using ready-made components. Ready-made components to get the records. Read the records. Create the records and edit the records. In order to perform all these operations, we can use this form. So that here, as part of this lighting web component, Salesforce has given the three okay element components over here. Let me explain what are those three components.
in this case as part of the swarm based whenever if you want to interact with your salesforce objects through swarm based that means by using some ready made components to interact with the objects and to perform the dml operations lighting web components has given three ready made components to ready for like lightning record form record view form and the record edit form these are the three components are available lightning record form record view form record edit form we'll see each and everything practically also now lightning web component provides the below three components components to be used to perform the dml operations the dml operations now the first one lightning the record form lightning record view form lightning record edit form these are the three ready made okay components has been given by salesforce which we can use in order to interact with your salesforce objects through lightning data services and then we can perform the dml operations next program so basically programming in the sense what by using javascript so this lighting data services is purely implemented based on the okay, user interface api so we can use the help of this user interface api management methods and then we can perform all the dml operations and the salesforce object cards no programming based now let's see lighting data services is purely built upon user interface api now we can use the help of we can use the help of user interface api methods to perform the get to perform the dml operations on the object cards like for example to get the records to view the records to create the records to delete the records to edit the records so you can perform all these operations also now so these are the two as part of this radius one is form based second one programming based form based means we can do some ready made components given by lightning the components that is lightning the card form the card view form the card edit form with the help of this are three components so we can able to interact with your sense for subjects and you can perform all the dml operations this is one way second way is with the help of user interface api basically lds is purely built upon okay user interface api so now we can use those user interface api methods also we can through javascript and with the help of those methods we can perform the dml operations on your object cards as well that facility will be available now then how can we do that okay now let's see. so in this case whenever we are going to be using this lightning data services to interact with your salesforce objects so in order to collect in order to get that the okay, current record id in order to get the current object name we are going to using some ready made okay javascript properties are available so now basically javascript provides the two properties over here these are two public properties which you can able to access anyway it may be child component it may be parent component also wherever you can able to accessible so now javascript provides two public properties okay which is used to collect your current record id and then current object name also based on the record id 
we can able to perform some operation because we can read the record, we can delete the record. If you want to fetch the records information, then you can specify the object name. So that here we are having this okay, two JavaScript properties are available. First one, record ID. Second one, object API ID. Okay, these are the two JavaScript properties are available. Record ID, object API ID. So these are the two properties are available which has been given by JavaScript. Both are public properties. That means both are API decorated properties. Because we know in order to make a property can be accessible from any place that means within the component and outside of the component to make that property our function as public we are using at the rate api decorator at the rate track decorator is for private at the rate api is for public and then we have while decorator to interact with your salesforce objects here okay just by using javascript we can invoke your apex class we can invoke your apex class methods and we can fetch the data also we can perform the operations now in this case, let's see how can we do that. Now, let's see. Note, I mean, while referencing Lightning data services inside the Lightning web component to get the current record and object details, JavaScript provides the below two public properties. Public properties. JavaScript provides below two public properties. First of all, at the rate API record id now what exactly this property these are the public property rediment property given by salesforce as part of this lightning web components now basically this property will holds the current record id internal this is a system defined it's a ready-made javascript property so we no need to prepare this one these are already defined by javascript which will be holding the current record id inside now This property holds the current record I. Second, at the rate API. Now, object API. Basically, this property will be holding the current records, objects. That means this record, whatever we have right now, that record is belongs to which object. To store that record object information, it is holding this okay object DB. This property holds the current record objects. It holds the current record objects in by default. Now, these are the two properties are available: record ID and the object ID. Now, let me show you how can we do that. So now, let me show you how do we know the current records information over here. Let me show you with a practical use case. Let's see. Now, let's see. Now, what I want to do is. I will create a lightning web component. There I will be indicating that I will be using these two JavaScript properties. I will collect those values and then I will show these values of the lightning web component. Here now let's see. Now use case. Design a lightning web component to fetch. The current records ID and object name and represent on the component. Now, then how can we do that here? Now let's see. Now let's
let me design a lighting that's on for it now. Let me go to that Visual Studio. Let me close all these components. Let me prepare a lighting web component. I'm creating a lighting web component. Create a lighting web component. I would like to specify that component and name over here. Story card details component. Show the card details component. Now let's inside this is JavaScript. Let's there are two rudiment properties given by Salesforce. First one is record ID, second one, okay, object if it at the rate API record ID, second one at the rate API object API. Object API, these are the two properties. So now whenever you are using this API decorator, we have to add that API inside your import statement. Now these are the two properties are here. Now these are the rediment properties given by lighting web component. So these properties are already holding this record IDs and object names inside. What are the current record that we're referencing right now? The current records ID it will collect, it will be collecting the API name. Generally, to get the current record information, we have to make a query. But now here we don't need to do that because this variable will be already holding the record ID inside it. These are ready-made okay, properties given by Salesforce. Now let me show you that. I want to show these details of like lighting card. I would like to specify that. title equals to current recorded details now i would like to indicate that i can mean standard account standard account now here i would like to represent this current record id is i would like to show record id i'm giving a break tag Current record object name as I would like to specify object API. Object API. Wow. So now these are the two properties. So these are the ready made properties given by Salesforce record ID and the object API name. So now here this I will be capital here. Okay, so please remember that. Here A is capital and N is also capital. If you are changing this character case, then it will want it will not collect the data over here. Now let's see. Let me save this a JavaScript file first. And now I'm saving this. HTML file. Now let me go to the metadata file. Here I would like to specify is exposed equals to true. I'm adding the targets. Targets, we can specify the target over here. It should be able to display our application page, target home page target record page. I want to show this one on this application page, home page, record pages also. Now, let me place this component inside my lighting application. So let me go to my default arc. Let me place this component in any of that record page over here. Automatically, it will capture those details. Now, 
let me go to my applications sales application take any of the object record over here for example account open any of the record retail page now here i would like to place that component over here how to place that component now let's see edit page whatever the component that you have defined i would like to place that component on the right side of your page now go to the custom components show because where is that show record details component here is the component which i would like to place it over here i'm placing here now it will represent that recorded details automatically now let me see this activation as an as recognition default now let's see now let's go back let's see the record now this is the current record that we have Aman Kumar. So now whenever we are going to representing this one, let's see. It is collecting the current record ID value. It is collecting that object name also automatically by default. This is the ID of the record, is the name of the record. See, have you written any SO cable queries to get all these things? No. Just we have used that defined those properties here. Those properties we have referenced inside my lighting web camera. That's it. So these two properties are ready-made properties given by Salesforce, which are always a story which are always storing the current record ID and the current object name also. Now let me show you with the old format. Let me show you. Here I want to show this content in bold format over here. Here's a bold format. By bold tag. Let me see. Here I'm giving one more break tag also. Now, let's go to your page and refresh it. Now, let's see. Here we can see the current record ID. This is a record ID, the current object name is account. For example, Take any of the other account record, account record ideas. Sandeep Kumar. Whenever I'm opening this, it will be indicating the current record ID. This is ID. Whatever the current record that we have, that record ID it will fetch automatically. For example, I'm going to one more record like some Santosh Kumar. Santosh Kumar record ID is fetching automatically by default. So, like the similar way, we can place this component on any of that object record ID record page also. From there, we can see the details. So, without having any interaction with the Salesforce database, without using any Apex classes, just by using this JavaScript properties itself, we can interact with your Salesforce objects. We can collect the current record ID, and then we can even to fetch the current object name also by default. This is how we can able to interact with your okay Salesforce objects through programming through with the help of this JavaScript. Then. Then how can we interact with your records and how to show the records information we'll see practically in tomorrow's session. In tomorrow's session, we'll see these components one by one. Like what is this a record form? What is this record view form? Record edit form? We'll see one by one with the practical use cases also. Present. How to represent this records information? We'll see practically one by one. Don't miss this part. This is very, very important because lighting data service is a very, very important feature as part of your lighting web components. Okay, now. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Let's meet on tomorrow at 7.